everybody this is B back again and we are with our life begins and always I think it's called that's why I've been typing I believe I always get it says our life but I always get confused okay Co Co shuffled inside eyes remaining on the ground mommy closed the door behind him also I would like to say that I had fun streaming again like, it's been the first time in a long time. This coming Sunday, I will not be streaming, though. I'm going to try to take uh, two days to one day off each week. So, I'm going to skip on stream days. So, it'll be like, I streamed last Sunday, so I won't be streaming this Sunday. But the next Sunday, I will. So, that'll be the 22nd I'll be streaming. But, I'm also going to take start taking Saturdays off just so I don't have burnout because school is about to start and I'm uploading two videos a day it's just it's a lot of work and I'm going to be doing 18 hours of school so I don't want to suffer too badly hi Cove Shiloh gave Cove a friendly smile while waving by holding up his hand and opening and closing his fingers Cove nodded in response Cove, are you going to catch fireflies with us? You can come outside with us if you want to. You could see Lizzie eyeing you for mentioning the excursion to an outsider, but she'll get over it. You crossed your fingers behind your head and looked at Cove expectantly, hoping he would say yes and you'd get some time with, spend some time with him. Yeah, that sounds cool. I never caught one before. It's too bad he didn't have a chance before now. The fireflies weren't out when he moved, first moved. And there must have not have been that many where he used to live. We can't go until after dinner. After she pointed this out, Lizzie walked back to the table and took her seat. There wasn't much left on her plate. Since this was very true, you decided to finish up your own stuff as well. Cove stepped closer and eyed what was on the menu for your family's meal have you eaten yet yeah my dad and I ate earlier what did you have eggs they the clipped one word answer seemed to discourage Shiloh from asking any more questions his eyes slowly wandered back to the last scraps of his food her phone call with Cove's dad must have ended because your mom came into the room Cove you said he said you can stay for a while if you'd like but he's coming to get you before it gets too much later. Sure. Oh, fun. This will be so nice. As you polished off your meal, you hoped it would be too. The three of you all finished eating shortly after, and Lizzie led the way outside. Remember, don't stray too far. It's fine, Mom. Shiloh trailed so closely after Lizzie, he was nearly stepping on her heels. Cove hesitated at the door. Coming? After a moment, he did. Bye. Bye, children. The two of you were a good 10 or 15 feet behind Lizzie and Shiloh by the time you walked outside. You pushed the door shut behind you, watching their figures get further and further away. You're so slow, B. We don't have all night. You started to run when you heard Lizzie's voice calling you, but paused when you saw a cove still walking at a relaxed pace. Are you not coming? You walked with him. You fall behind, tossing him a smile. Don't worry, you're going to love it. Cove glanced over at you, giving you a slow nod with a strange look on his face. What is it? Nothing. By the time you two reached the hill, Lizzie had already climbed to the top. Shiloh was spinning in circles somewhere around in the middle. Bright winking, light, bright winking lights floated by the bayous on a wave. Buoys, I said by you, buoys on a wave. One drifted close enough for you to see the firefly at the center of the glow. And you looked at Cove, excited to see his reaction. He just looked as entranced. He looked just as entranced. Wow. Shiloh took a moment to come over and welcome the both of you to the hill. Hi guys, it's really great out, huh? See how many there are? Yeah. A firefly danced through the air, landing on Coe's sea green head. Charlotte can't help but giggle. You and Charlotte can't help but giggle. Sh 
Covering your mouth with a hand, the sound escaped you, and Cove looked at you in confusion. What? Oh, look! Lizzie has one. That's amazing! Shella ran the highest point of the hill, making sure not to lose his hat or backpack along the way. You hummed as the group divided and conquered, shifting your gaze to the dozen of other fireflies sailing around. The game was on. You had a bandage on your thumb and you tried to be cautious of that. Uh, we're clumsy in real life, so I probably would have two bandages on your hand and you tried to be cautious of that. Spotting one close by your approach, it you approached it with assassin-like stealth, crouching down to make sh yourself seem like less of a threat. Slowly dragging one foot in front of the other, you crept towards it and arms outstretched. You closed your hands around the little glowing orb, careful not to crush it. The firefly landed on your palm, almost docile, and you stared down at the prize in delight. Its tiny legs tickled your skin and you giggled at the sensation. Cove kept up with his own target, but when he tried to grab it, his pink cast waved awkwardly through the air. Foiling his efforts to clap his hands around the firefly. Ah. Cove watched it vanish into thin air with dissatisfied expression on his face. Uh, you told him about the firefly you had. You encouraged him to try again. We're going to tell him, hey, want to see the one I got? Cove gave one more look in the direction of his lost prize before coming closer and peering at the insect still crawling across your palm. You held out your hand and he leaned closer, eyes widening a tad bit behind his glasses. Cove remained hypnotized by the little bug as he inched his hand closer to yours. Ultimately, he, settles, he settled his fingers slightly over the top of the ones you were holding open. It tingled. You stayed very still. The last thing you wanted was to accidentally scare the shiny treasure off. Ah! The firefly noticing the new connection crawled up to Cove's hand. He quietly gasped. So that's why I was asking about the band-aids. It worked. Yeah, he got one. Cove's lips turned up into a slow smile and his eyes shined brighter than the bug. Thanks, B. Your eyes and his locked together while still holding hands. Um, he suddenly pulled away. Startled by the extreme movement, the tiny light disappeared before you could even blink. Your firefly was gone. Oops, sorry. You forgave him. That's okay, I can't keep it forever. Right, bugs have to stay outside. Let's get another. You decide to collect more. Uh-huh, we can work together. His face broke out into a wide grin. We'll get a bunch. With renewed vigor, you ran out into the hill. You're not sure how much time passed while you were in it, the thick of it. Into the thick of it. <laughs> All your, you could focus on was the adventure at hand. No critter was safe from your grasp. At first, you tried to keep a tally of how many you had caught, but once the number grew higher than ten, you had no more fingers left to count with. You were having the time of your life, racing up and down the hill with the crash of the ocean, the sound of everyone's laughter echoing in the background. B, this way. You followed the sound of Cove's voice to the top of the hill, watching as he stretched his arms out in front of him, reaching with his fingers and only narrowly missing his target. Cove and you took turns trying to scare fireflies in the direction of the other. You showed him some techniques that you had learned, like how to cup your hand correctly, and he listened intently before trying for himself. There were a few times you almost ran into each other, giggling as you dove to the side at the last moment. Luckily, disaster was avoided each time. It was an overall huge success with both of you catching multiple fireflies each. Eventually, the fireflies began to thin out and your energy started to lapse. You decided it was time to call the hunt off. Cove didn't complain. He breathed in heavily and his face seemed really flushed. That was fun. A lot of fun. You smiled at him bro broadly, happy that he had, enjoyed, he had enjoyed the activity. Yeah, it was. 
B, Cove, get up here. We're going to have a race. The shouting caught you off guard. It had been quite a while since you heard from Lizzie or Shyla. You glanced over to see them both standing up on top of the hill again. Lizzie beckoning to you with quick hand gestures. As she was like that, you knew there wasn't much room for disagreement. Up to the incline you went. From the corner of your eye, you saw Cove was coming as well. He didn't care for Lizzie a lot, so you thought he might be intrigued just by the idea of a race. Hi. Hi, Cove. You can't roll down the hill. You could hurt your arm again. You'll be the referee for the rest of us. As Lizzie pointed this out, Cove froze in place. Oh, it was that kind of race. He frowned down at his cast. This is the second time it got in the way tonight. What? Yeah, you'll watch and see who gets to the bottom first. That's important. Got it? I guess. The cast was sturdy. If he was careful, he could have done it. Lizzie might have just been looking for a reason to make someone else the referee, but it was already decided. I'll stay with Cove. Really? Why? You don't have to. It's okay. I want to watch. You moved beside him on top of the hill, and even though Lizzie eyed you and made a face, that's not how races work. We only need one referee. Shrugging your shoulders, you refused to budge, and Lizzie let out a huff before throwing her hands in the air. Fine, I'll be the winner, whether you join or not. Lizzie moved to lay down, and Shiloh did the same. Cove stood si slightly to the side to get a better vantage point, and you stood next to him. Countdown. Cove stood up a little straighter. It seemed like he was taking his newfound referee duty seriously. Three, two, one, go. Lizzie and Shallow took off, letting gravity do the work and rolling at high speeds towards the bottom of the hill. You and Cove leaned forward to watch them go, eyes peeled for which of the two would reach the bottom first. They were both neck and neck until about halfway down the hill, Lizzie started to veer to the side, giving Shiloh a, a huge advantage. She obviously hadn't noticed a thing, and as soon as Shiloh reached the bottom of the hill, he jumped up excitedly and threw his hands in the air. I won! Almost immediately, he fell back onto the grass, still dizzy from his roll down the hill. Lizzie stomped out of the bush she had ended up in, spluttering angrily and brushing leaves from the front of her dress. Not bad. You got lucky. Let's do it again and see who wins for real. Kids, it's time to come in. No! You snickered, feeling grateful you hadn't been a part of the mini debacle. You caught Go Cove's eyes and saw that he was doing the same. It had gone late and it was beginning to feel just a little bit chilly as you made your way out of the hill. But the cold in the air hadn't dampened anyone's spirit. The four of you walked back home together side by side down your neighborhood street, discussing the evening with each person trying to prove that they were the one who caught the most fireflies. You knew that whoever really did catch the most didn't matter much anyways. All that mattered was that all you had you all had a good time. Which judging by the smiles on everyone's faces, you did. Okay, we don't know that. Whew Let's save that. Okay, let's go back. We got all kinds of stuff. Every year, the Sunset Bird Memorial Library held a summer reading program. Yours, your moms and Lizzie were big fans of it. Mom and Mommy because it encouraged reading, and Lizzie because she could win prizes. When it came to what you thought of having to read a bunch of books and then going to the library with a competitive Lizzie, you loved it. Each time had been one of the highlights of your summer. Getting to hang out with Lizzie and Shiloh and learn new stuff was a lot of fun, even if Lizzie was super intense about it. You and Lizzie went with Shiloh before, and this year you'd brought Cove too. His dad had been so over the moon about Cove being included that he'd driven all four of you. You had never been in Cove's car, dad's car before. It seemed a lot shinier than your mom's. After herding the group inside, Mr. Holden gave you all a wide wave with the arms that has a stingray on it. Have fun, kids. 
Stay inside the librarian, do you hear? I wish I could watch you in action, but your poor old dad has to finish up some work. Though, I'm sure that won't get in the way. Heck, I'd probably hold you guys, you kids back. There's pointedly no reply from his son over what was likely meant as only as a joke. Cove's dad seemed to deflate a bit. I'll swing around again when this shindig is ends. Yeah, you can go home now. Aw, you don't have to throw me out the door, I... Your sister already in full competition mode cut him off. For once, Cove looked grateful she was there. We have to go find a table, Mr. Holden. You can talk to Cove after, when we win. Okay, okay. See you in about an hour. Have fun. Did I say that already? My av advanced age is really catching up to me now. Bye, Dad. Bye, son. The four of you watched him shuffle out of the library, glancing over his shoulder at Cove more than once. Bye, Mr. Holden. Thanks for bringing us. Thanks, Lizzie. I don't know what you're thanking me for. Are you copying Shiloh? Distracted Cove was already glancing around the gigantic library. I want to go explore. What? I said I want to go look around and see what's in here. But the quiz starts soon. That's why we came. Wide at the first signs of conflict, Shiloh's eyes darted between Lizzie and Cove. Then you can do it without me, right? You don't need a bunch of people. Didn't your dad say to stay with the librarians? You shouldn't go somewhere by yourself. Cove leveled up in unimpressed stare at the both of them. Then his eyes met yours. Why are you looking at her? B is with us. B, do you want to come with me? Cove's idea is more fun. I'd rather go exploring. The Oof. We're going to go over to Cove. You walked over to Cove, averting your eyes from Lizzie. Seriously? Cove looked surprised, but happy at the same time. He knew this was one of the things you liked doing with your family, but you chosen time with him anyway. Ugh, fine. Let's go, Shiloh. Ah, okay. Her arms folded, your sister stormed off. Shiloh had to race up to keep up with her. Mm, she cares a lot about that. That's just how Lizzie is, haha. <laughs> I don't like it. Since you've been here a lot before, we could play hide and seek. Hide and seek? Not exploring? Yep. If I'm searching for you and you're searching for me, we'll really we'll really have a look we'll really have to look at everything. You weren't entirely sure of how affected that would be, but couldn't say he was totally wrong. I'll hide first. Decision made, Cove took towards the back of the library. You yeah. You'd already agreed to play with him instead, so you covered your face and waited for ten seconds. When you looked up again, he was nowhere to be seen. You glanced over towards the way he went. Cove hadn't been much time to hide, but he was already invisible. The place you decided to check was... Oh, no. I am horrible at hide-and-seek. Uh... Beside the fairy tale display. Near the older kids' section, there was a display with a bunch of fancy-looking books. They were old copies of old stories. Leaning over the hands, Christian Anderson section, hand resting on the glass above the Little Mermaid and Thumbelina books were, you peered into a tiny corner. And there was Cove, seemingly lost in thought. Gotcha. Ah, uh, I didn't think you'd find me so fast. Nice one. I'm like a bloodhound. Cove laughed as a smile overtook his face. You kind of are. Your turn now. I'm going to cover my eyes and count to ten. I promise I won't peek. While Cove had his eyes securely behind the palms of his hands, you went to go hide under a giant piece of fruit near the stuffed animals. Uh, I'm going to near the, hide this near the stuffed animals. There was a place near the toddler's books with lots of stuffed animals for kids to play with. A tiny section among the books, boxes of toys and beanbags were almost out of sight if you didn't check closely. It was the perfect place to blend in, and for a little while, you did just that. Unfortunately, all this, those stuffed animals were also your downfall. 
As soon as you took your breath and leaned back, one of their press to talk sensors went off. Oh dear, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. I'm late, I'm late for a, like a super spy detective on the trail of a diabolical supervillain, which in this case was probably you. Cove was there as soon as the white rabbit started squeaking. Wow, that's loud. Oh no. Clearly entertained by your dramatic pretend faint, Cove laughed. That's silly. Thanks, I know. He laughed again. He wiggled in a spot far away from the rabbit and gestured to the rest of the library. It's my turn again. Start counting so I can go pick a spot. Okay. Cove darted off before even you had a little, you even had a chance to fully close your eyes. One Mississippi. When the time was up, he was long gone again. There was still a lot of good places to hide, so you figured he was. Uh, we're gonna go next to the kid detective poster. You figured he was probably near the poster with a gigantic poster of a smirking kid detective. Cove could have hidden in the itty-bitty little reading area next to it. Glancing past the poster itself, your brain registered the words Juna B. Jones, don't call her Beatrice, in big imposing letters. You paused to stare at it for a second, thinking, Why would I call her Beatrice if her name is Junie? Shaking your head to clear away the distraction, you tiptoed in to see who was sitting in the comfy chair. And sure enough, it was Cove. But he was so absorbed in the book he was reading that he hadn't even noticed you yet. I don't think most people read while playing hide and seek. Cove glanced up at you in one rough motion. Oh, hi, B. I wasn't sure when you'd get here. It took a while. Not that long. It could have been worse, but it could have been better. Let's keep playing. I'm doing good. He put his hands over his eyes, but before you could run off again, a librarian approached the two of you. Aha, kids, I've been looking for you. Cove peeked between his fingers at the stranger. Us? You must be Cove. Your dad told me he was waiting by the entrance. Cove blinked, mouth opening like he was going to say something, then glanced down at his pink cast. It was a pretty clear giveaway. Sure. Is my sister Lizzie with him? She's taller than us and has orange hair. You're B, right? You nodded. Phew, I found both of you at once. That's right, she's with him. And the little guy with freckles. Come on, let's get you let's go get you reunited so we can close up for the night. Ready to go home, you and Co followed him up front. Where the rad tag group of family members and Shadow was waiting. There you are. She was pouting. You could tell from all the way across the room, and it was only that much more obvious as you got closer. Did you win? We came in second. Hey, gang. I thought you, you'd have been with them the whole time, Cove. I'm glad you didn't just go off by yourself, at least. Cove glanced at you, then back up at his dad. Me too. A broad smile spread over Mr. Holden's face. Even so, next time you should... Cove? Cove? Cove's dad glanced around, slightly frantic. But Cove, just like always, had snuck off without thinking to say anything. He's leaving. Cove's trying to be the first one to the car. With a sudden burst of speed, Lizzie darted for the exit, still in Victor to be mode, even for something like a race to the right to ride in the front seat. There was nothing else for the three of you to do except head after them, pretending the librarian tent knows all the commotion. Though Lizzie had been victorious in claiming a window seat in the car, you could tell by her crossed arms and occasional pout that she was still not that she still had not forgiven your betrayal. Cove hadn't been pleased about how he had to sit in the middle, but his mood lifted as you sat next to him. Did you say you came in second place? That's some good going. No, it's not. She levied another glance at you over her shoulder. Uh, sure, sure. Striving to improve is good, too. I was winning in our game. Hardly. I was about to beat you. Hide and seek with just you two? That doesn't even count as winning. Why not? It's not special. There's no judges or prizes. You eyed the seat that she fought so hard to win. 
That wasn't much of a prize either. Dad? Yes? You could see Cove's dad's eyes in the rear view mirror, suddenly attentive of his son's call. We need a prize. Uh, as a matter of fact, Mr. Holden focused intently on the road ahead, as though a suitable reward to please Cove might appear before him. Right, the big thing on the flyer for this was the chance to get a free pizza coupon, wasn't it? How about I call up a takeout place and we can have pizza at home for dinner? Lizzie huffed, pulling her arms closer to her chest. Great, now only Cove gets it. Now only Cove gets anything good. Hey there, I'll ask your moms if it'd be alright for you kids to have some. Thanks, Cove's dad. Thanks, Mr. Holden. Yeah, thanks, dad. You're welcome. I do what I can. But you really should have stuck with the group. The quiz would have been fun. That was the plan when I dropped you off. We stayed together and didn't leave the library. I'm glad for that. I am. I, well, there's a lot of trouble you can get into even if you do have a buddy along for the ride. Just be careful next time. I worry about you, and I bet B's parents wouldn't want her to run off unexpectedly either, okay, son? Okay. That's my boy. Now enough guff from your old dad. Let's decide what kind of toppings we're gonna get. Pepperoni! Sounds good. Anything else? After the conversation continued from there, with debates on what was the best to put on the pizza for the rest of the drive, Mr. Holden wanted anchovies, and the other three kids in the car had to band together to explain how gross they were. The way Cove's dad laughed up in the front seat made you wonder if he was doing it on purpose. You had a fun day already, but closing it out with the promise of a free pizza after all, and more time to hang out with Cove, made it even sweeter. It was a shame that you hadn't been able to do the quiz, but skipping it for just one year didn't hurt. It was worth it. The night was incredibly still. You couldn't ignore how silent it was. It was almost eerie. You could even hear Lizzie snoring in the next room over. It was hard to believe how much of the blur today was. Summer sure did slip right past you. You flicked through the moments like pages in a scrapbook as you laid in bed. The one that stuck out all seemed to include your new neighbor, Cove. It was funny how he became such a big part of your life in such a short span of time. You thought a lot about what adventures you could have tomorrow until the sleep started to catch up to you. Then you heard something scrape against your window. It wasn't that uncommon for the wind to push a tree branch against the glass. Summer breezes were the worst sometimes. But the more you tried to ignore it, the louder it seemed like it became. It was like something was trying to get your attention. You lifted your head off the pillow to get a better look. Nothing was there. Nothing you could see at least. You went back to bed, it was only much you had to investigate the mysterious sound. It's too creepy to ignore. You practically jumped out of bed and crept down the stairs to go outside. Your moms were still awake. They stayed up so late, it seemed. Luckily, they were watching TV and didn't hear the soft click of the front door opening as you slipped past. You looked around the neighborhood for a few seconds, checking over each individual house. It looked normal, but it didn't feel that way. You knew you weren't supposed to be out there right now. It made you regret your decision. It scared you. It was exhilarating. Your chest was light and you couldn't keep the grin from your face. No one had permitted you to go out. In fact, no one even knew you were out. And yet, here you were. You wondered what else you could do. Why other rules were so ingrained that you had never even considered that they could be broken. B? You twitched at the sudden call. Immediately calming down upon seeing Cove walking up to you. It was strange, and yet also completely normal, to have him appear like this right now. What are you doing? I saw you standing around in the middle of the street from my window. You weren't sleeping either? Why not? Cove turned up his lip to smile, almost as if he was amused by the question. Because... Did you hear a weird noise? I'm glad you're here. Whatever the reason is, at least you were no longer alone in the dark. Cove fumbled for an answer at your son in a mission. You are? Yeah. I heard a strange noise. You too? That's why I was up. Cove hesitated for a moment looking down the street before his aquamarine eyes fell on you again. Did it scare you? 
A little. Me too. I feel better that you're here. Me too. The two of you delicately smiled at each other. Cove even chuckled a bit. It was nice that you both felt the same way about things. I was kind of wondering if it was the wind, but what if it's not? What if it's a person? What if it's something that's not a person? An unsettling noise suddenly rushed through the air. Cove and you flinched. It sounds even worse than before. You were about to agree with him when noise came yet again, tearing through the still night. The two of you rapidly looked around, trying to figure out find the source, but to no avail, there was no sign of an answer to this puzzle. You thought that... Oh, that's the timer. So we're going to have to save and figure out later in the next video what it is. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope that... I'll see you guys in the next video. If you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe subscribe button because it really does keep me going. So, bye!